and uh, I understand that copies of my speech are on their way down, so deputies that want them will get those copies. Um, following the Taoiseach's update on the most recent European Council meeting, uh, I will focus on the following issues. Uh, the Syrian crisis, migration, the MFF, Brexit and the new European Commission's work programme. That's a lot to deal with in 10 minutes, uh, but I'll try and do as much as I can. The European Council uh, issued a declaration on Idlib, uh, calling on all actors to cease hostilities immediately and to guarantee the protection of civilians. It also called for the situation in Syria to be referred to the International Criminal Court, which I believe to be particularly important. Um, um, uh, in following up to this, uh, last week I signed uh, an op-ed with 13 other EU foreign ministers calling on the Syrian regime and its supporters to end its offensive and resume uh, the ceasefire established in uh, 2018. In the past three months, nearly one million people ha have been displaced by the Syrian government uh, military offensive. The humanitarian situation is nothing short of a, hu of a human disaster. The EU is, is urgently responding to the crisis and exerting whatever political pressure it can uh, bring to bear uh, to try to deliver de-escalation of violence. The Commission uh, is working to release 60 million euros in humanitarian aid for northwest Syria. Ireland contributed over 25 million euros uh, to the Syrian crisis in 2019, and already this year funding has been authorised specifically to address the needs in northwest Syria. I will attend an extraordinary Foreign Affairs Council meeting uh, that has been called for tomorrow uh, to, to discuss this situation uh, and the associated migration crisis that has flown from it. That will be in Zagreb tomorrow. I am deeply concerned with, with the migration situation uh, developing at the external uh, EU borders with Turkey. Uh, the Syria crisis has had a serious impact not just on Syria's neighbours, uh, which host over five million refugees between them but also uh, has the potential to impact significantly on the EU as well. Since the start of the crisis in 2015, I have consistently called on all EU member states to play their part in burden sharing and helping to relieve the pressures on frontline states like Greece and Italy and others, but also to ensure that people are treated in a way that is consistent with international humanitarian standards and law. I want to express Ireland's solidarity with Greece and Bulgaria as they face the enormous task of dealing with the thousands of new arrivals at their borders. But I also want to urge both countries to ensure uh, people's personal well-being uh, and to ensure that their protection is guaranteed, which clearly hasn't been happening. We continue to support the European Council position that a comprehensive approach uh, is essential for a properly functioning EU migration policy. We cannot simply allow some EU countries who happen to be geographically close to, uh, to crisis areas to carry an unfair share of the burden, which is what's been happening. While the social, economic and political stresses are considerable, it is essential that humanitarian and legal obligations continue to be met. Uh, Ireland, and indeed I, on behalf of Ireland, have consistently been uh, critical of the EU um, in the context of the ending of the humanitarian element uh, of the rescue mission uh, in, in the Mediterranean. Uh, I was the Minister for Defence that decided to send Irish ships to the Mediterranean in the first place, uh, and I think uh, uh, we had six um, uh, such missions. Uh, um, I think Irish ships, if I'm correct, uh, managed to rescue about 16,000 people from the water, uh, and I would certainly be open to committing to do that again in the future. Uh, if we can have a collective EU position uh, to ensure that that is done properly. That isn't the position at the moment, and it's not possible to get political agreement across the EU on virtually anything to do with co a collective approach towards migration. And this is the, the core of the problem, uh, and I take the frustrations uh, that many in this House have expressed today. Uh, turning to the MFF, um, uh, which is related in many ways. Uh, the new MFF will, uh, under heading six, six, which is neighbourhood and the world, align EU actions more closely to our international commitments. Under the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, the Paris Agreement on Climate Change and uh, on the EU Global Strategy. Importantly, this will also give the EU the means to reinvigorate its relationship with Africa, uh, which I believe to be hugely important 
uh, which is an important priority for Ireland uh, and which tallies with the new strategy for Africa, which the government published uh, a number of months ago. We are also very supportive of continuing support to the Caribbean and uh, Pacific, as well as uh, small, island, small island developing states, which we have forged close relationships with in recent years. Such investments make sense. On, issue, on issues such as climate change, migration, peace and security and counter-terrorism, the external and internal aspects are intimately interlinked uh, and the new EU budget needs to respond accordingly. We need an external action budget which is more flexible, uh, responsive and coherent, enabling the EU to engage more strategically with partners across the globe, uh, pursuing our values and protecting our interests. Far too often, uh, external debates uh, within the European Union in, in the context of our relationship with Africa and North Africa in particular is dominated by the one issue of migration and it needs to be far broader than that. Um, of course, um, while the political focus in Ireland in the context of the MFF will continue to revolve around cap budgets for our farmers here, it is important also to refer to the important external actions that will need to be funded in the future as well. Um, just in, in answer to your question, uh, Deputy, uh, in terms of the Irish Refugee Protection Programme, out of the 4,000 uh, that we have committed to accommodate in Ireland, uh, 3,151 uh, as of December 2019 is the figure that we've currently accommodated, uh, of which uh, uh, 1,000, I think it's either and 72 or 22, uh, are under the EU uh, relocation mechanism. So, uh, and we will certainly followed through on that commitment in full in terms of, of, of 4,000. And I'm glad to put that on the record. Um, the, the General Affairs Council uh, on the 25th of February uh, authorised the opening of negotiations on the future relationship between the EU and the UK uh, and agreed the uh, EU's uh, negotiating mandate. Uh, with Helen McEntee, uh, I met with uh, the EU Chief Negotiator Michel Barnier last week in Brussels in advance of the General Affairs Council. Uh, the EU mandate sets out the EU's clear position based on the political declaration agreed between the EU and the UK on the 17th of October last year, as well as uh, European Council guidelines and conclusions. It provides a generous and fair foundation uh, on which a new uh, EU-UK relationship can be built. Uh, there, is, there, there has been extensive coordination across government to ensure that Ireland's priorities are reflected in the EU mandate, which affirms uh, the uh, EU ambition for a close and deep partnership with the United Kingdom. Of course, the level of ambition on the UK side will also influence what is possible to achieve. We welcome the continuing focus on, uh, in the uh, EU mandate on protecting the Good Friday Agreement uh, and on uh, uh, ensuring uh, issues arising from Ireland's unique geographical situation are addressed, uh, as well as the common travel area is protected. Protecting the Good Friday Agreement and the gains of the peace process in all circumstances continue to be a key priority for Ireland, uh, and this priority is shared by our EU partners. Uh, the UK Government published its approach to the negotiations on the 27th of February in advance of the start of negotiations between the EU and the UK last Monday. Negotiations will be conducted on behalf of the 27 member states by the Task Force uh, for Relations with the United Kingdom un under Michel Barnier and also by the Commission. Uh, given the UK position uh, that the transition period will not be extended beyond the end of this year, uh, it may not be possible to reach agreement on all issues currently being discussed as part of the negotiations in the time that is available. Uh, we will continue to work closely and assess progress with our EU partners as the talks progress, and I, I look forward to uh, updating this House uh, as often as I can while I hold the position that I do. The work uh, of the period ahead uh, will be to achieve an ambitious and fair partnership that works for the benefit of all uh, and provides a new and strong foundation for the EU-UK relationship, which is certainly in Ireland's interest. At the same time, it is important to see the implementation of the withdrawal agreement. Uh, the link between implementation and future relationship negotiations is also reflected in the, in the mandate, and so it must be. The ratification of the withdrawal agreement means that regardless of the outcome of the EU-UK future relationship negotiations, the protocol on Ireland uh, and Northern Ireland will be in place and will be implemented. 
The protocol includes measures to avoid a hard border on the island of Ireland, maintaining the common travel area, the single electricity market, uh, and protecting continued north-south cooperation into the future. Finally, Ireland welcomes the Commission's work, uh, work programme for 2020 and broadly supports its proposals. The strong focus on implementing the priorities contained in the strategic agenda adopted by the European Council last June are particularly welcome. Uh, addressing the biggest concerns of our citizens must remain the EU's overriding objective. We welcome the clear roadmap uh, outlined in the Green New Deal uh, and its transformative agenda. Uh, we look forward to working with all member states and the EU institutions to translate the ambition uh, of the Green Deal into real and lasting change, both here and across the European Union. We welcome the recognition in the Commission's programme of the ongoing work uh, at the OECD on international tax reform. We, we remain ready to engage constructively to address any tax challenges that arise from the uh, digitalisation uh, of the economy across the EU. We welcome the review uh, of the EU forest strategy. It is important that natural uh, and uh, plantation forests continue to be recognised for the important role that they play in, in the uh, climate change mitigation and ad adaptation strategies that are applied both here and across the European Union. Uh, thank you very much.